I'm going to show you the best way to fold a model rocket parachute. Hey friends, it's the Rocket Noob, and here we talk about building and flying model rockets and high power rockets. And in this video, we'll go over the basics of parachutes so you never have a problem recovering your rockets. We'll go over different ways to attach them, the best way to fold them so they open every time, and finally, what's the deal with these little holes? Now, there are a couple of different ways of attaching parachutes to model rockets. The instructions in a model rocket kit usually tell you to attach a parachute this way. Now, your parachute is going to have three strings or threads attached to them. These are called shroud lines. One of them is attached to the outside corners on one side, one is attached to the outside corners on the other side, and the third one is attached to two opposite corners in the middle. You're supposed to gather up the shroud lines and find the middle, make a little loop, find the loop of your nose cone and pass the shroud lines through, then take the canopy of the parachute and pass it through that loop of shroud lines. Now it's attached to your nose cone. I don't prefer this for a few reasons. First of all, parachutes tend to get tangled, especially after you've launched them. When your rocket comes down on a parachute and it lands on the ground, a lot of times kids will go and grab the rocket and pick it up and run back with it. When that happens, the, the nose cone starts to swing in and out of the shroud lines, and these lines can get tangled pretty quickly. You might find that after just a few launches, the parachute is so tangled, it's hard to get it untangled. Now, I don't like to spend 20 minutes untangling a parachute. So in the past, I've gotten so frustrated, I just cut the parachute off. Then I either have to get new thread and repair the parachute, which I don't want to do, or I have to get a new parachute. It's already tangled. Look, I'm trying to take this off and it's already tangled. It's already tangled and I haven't even done anything with it yet. Little tiny threads are a pain to detangle. So let's not do it that way. Fortunately, there's a better way. This is a snap swivel. It's a piece of fishing equipment. It has a little loop on one end that you can attach the shroud lines to, and the other side has this little snap closure that you can open up and attach to your rocket. Putting this on a parachute is easy. Just like you would do if you were attaching it to a nose cone, you're gonna find the center of your shroud lines. You're gonna thread the shroud lines through the loop in the snap swivel. Now, if you're having trouble with this part, there's a little tool you can make with a paper clip and a pair of needle nose pliers. Now you have a little hook that you can use to grab onto the shroud lines, keep them all together, and pull them through. Once I have the shroud lines through the, through the loop, I'm just gonna pass the snap swivel back through the loop of shroud lines and pull them tight. Now, instead of tying your parachute to the nose cone, all you have to do is open up the snap swivel, attach it to the nose cone, and close the snap swivel, and you're done. This has got a number of advantages. First of all, the snap swivel can rotate, so if the rocket is spinning when the parachute comes out, it's less likely to get tangled. And when the rocket lands, you can just take the parachute off. This will keep the parachute from getting tangled with the nose cone. It makes it easier to swap out parachutes. So for example, maybe it's a windy day and you want to put a smaller parachute in your rocket. That way it'll come down a little faster, it won't drift as far, and it'll be less likely to get lost or stuck in a tree. Also, sometimes you have more rockets than parachutes. Sometimes I'll go to a launch and I'll have six or seven rockets, but two or three parachutes. I can launch a rocket, take the parachute off, put it in another rocket, and I'm ready to go. Plus, if this ever does get tangled, you can simply take it off the snap swivel, and the shroud lines usually detangle themselves. Now let's talk about folding parachutes. The most common failures in model rocketry are recovery failures, like when your parachute either doesn't come out of the rocket or it fails to open. Properly folding your parachute is going to help fix that. Now some instructions tell you to fold parachutes like this. Grab the center of the canopy, pull the shroud lines tight. Then you fold everything down. Then you roll in one side and roll in the other side. Finally, you take the shroud lines and wrap them loosely around the whole bundle. And that's your folding. Now this can work. It probably works most of the time, but I don't like it very much. First of all, this is very bulky and it's very long. And with all the extra folding and rolling, sometimes this doesn't open up. I've seen a lot of parachutes fail to open up, even if they come out of the rocket. And I think there are better ways to fold parachutes. So I'm gonna show you the way I do it. And with this method, I pretty much never have a failure. First of all, I'm gonna lay my parachute out flat, upside down. At this point, it's not attached to the rocket. The rocket is prepped with recovery wadding already inside. The shock cord is stuffed inside. The nose cone is on, it's just waiting. So I've got a straight side facing toward me and a straight side away from me. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the top down. 
and I'm going to pull the shroud lines out from inside the parachute. Now, when I'm teaching kids how to do this, I like to say, look, kind of looks like Batman. And what happens when Batman sees the Joker? Well, he gets angry and he crosses his arms. So I fold one top corner down like this to the opposite side, and I fold the other top corner down like this to the other side. All the time taking the shroud lines and making sure they're not stuck in the middle of the chute. Now I have a little triangle. I'm gonna fold this triangle into a smaller triangle like this. Now I have all of my shroud lines coming off of one corner. Everything's nice and neat. So I'm gonna take the shroud lines, I'm gonna lay them gently on the parachute in the middle of that triangle, and I'm gonna fold it in half to make an even skinnier triangle. I still have the snap swivel out here where I can reach it. All right, I'm gonna take the top third and I'm gonna fold it down, and I'm gonna fold that down so I folded it in thirds, and I'm just going to tightly roll this up. Now, because I laid the shroud lines in the middle there, all it's going to have to do is just unfold, and the whole parachute will open up. It doesn't have to unroll. You're not going to worry about bunched up bits of plastic getting stuck together. It's going to unfold. Now I open up my snap swivel. I pull off the nose cone just a little bit, and I attach the parachute. Finally, I stuff the rest of the shock cord back inside and I put the parachute in. Now it's a much smaller bundle. It's not very tight and it's going to come out of there nice and easily and open up no problem. One quick tip is always remember to pack your parachutes fresh. Now, if you've had a rocket sitting on the shelf for a few weeks and it already has a parachute in it and you go to fly it, chances are the parachute will not open. The plastic will just kind of maintain its shape and stick together, and you may not have the rocket recover safely. Now, I, I take a lot of rockets to launches, and so I prepare them the night before. Packing parachutes the night before is fine, but if it's been like a week or so, you want to take the parachute out of the rocket, open it up, and refold it. Okay, but what's the deal with this big hole in the middle of the parachute? This is called a spill hole, and sometimes you'll see that people will cut them in their plastic chutes. See, these plastic chutes are pretty much airtight. So when the rocket is descending, the air trapped underneath the chute will cause the chute to rock back and forth as it spills out. With the hole in the middle, air can escape out the top. This means your rocket will rock back and forth a lot less. This is gonna to lead to less tangling, and it might even reduce the distance that your rocket drifts, so you're less likely to lose it or get it caught in a tree. Now, this doesn't harm your parachute. The rocket will come down slowly just fine. It's not a problem. Every now and then, someone will ask, if this damages the parachute, if it makes the rocket come down too fast. And no, it actually doesn't really harm the efficiency of the parachute. It works great. And you don't have to cut spill holes, but they're very easy, and I'm gonna show you how. All you're gonna need is a parachute and a decent pair of scissors. Now, how to cut a perfect circle in the middle of a plastic sheet kind of baffles people sometimes, uh, but it's very easy. First of all, where to cut and how big to cut is pretty much decided for you. So a lot of these model rocket companies already have a circle in the middle of the parachute. As a matter of fact, Estes gives you this nice dotted line. So cutting this is pretty easy. First, I'm gonna lay the parachute flat upside down just as though I were going to fold it for, for flying. I'm gonna fold the top down and I'm gonna try and line up the edges as best I can. Then I'm gonna fold it in half once again. I'm gonna try and line up the edges here as well as I can and I'm gonna fold it one more time. Now, the more times you fold it, the less perfect it will be, but you don't have to worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will still be pretty good. I'm gonna pinch them all together nice and tight, and I'm gonna carefully cut along the dotted line. Now, once I open up, I have an almost perfect circle. Now, if it's not perfectly along the dotted line or there's a slight imperfection, it's okay. It's not gonna affect the performance of the parachute. All right, so that's parachutes. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you wanna learn more. And as always, build well, fly safe, and I'll catch you next time.